Well, good day and welcome to Dream Design Do TV with Zaki Amir. I'm your host, Peter Montgomery. Once a week, we ask Zaki a question about property investing. And the cool thing about Zaki is he's actually built a $3 million property portfolio with 15 properties in the short space of only three years. And the cool thing is he did this with a very low startup capital. So uh, welcome to the call this week, Zaki. Good day, Peter. How's it going? Going good, man. Now, this week, uh, I would just want to ask you something, right? So in your experience in life uh, and in investing in property for yourself and for your clients, like I'm sure everything doesn't always go to plan. So can you just share uh, some of your experiences and how you've dealt with it when, when things don't go to plan? Yeah, Peter, this uh, week's episode, I guess the topic is being patient and prepared for the unexpected. In my view of life experience and investing in general is that success is not a straight line to reaching a destination or reaching a goal. Success is to me is the experiences you have while you live life, enjoying that um, journey of life. And also the most important part is that being adaptable to changes. So that's the most important thing we have to first accept that it is not going to be a straight line journey that this is a we got to get to B and it's just going to be a straight path. Once we accept that there's going to be changes and challenges, then we have to accept the path that every action we take in life is actually a risk. So as we know, the old analogy, if you cross the road, you might be, you know, for example, hit by a bus, maybe, maybe not, but that is a risk. So the biggest risk, in my opinion, in life or in investing is not to take a risk at all. So taking a risk is important. But the most important part also of that is when you do take a risk, we, didn't, we should not make hasty decisions in life. So what I mean by that is that we should make our decisions based on facts and data and opinions of people who have succeeded before us, i.e. people who have already achieved the results we've achieved. So once we make that decision and we take that risk, which is then becomes a calculated risk, and what I mean by a calculated risk is that, yes, we know, for example, things won't go for, to plan, but we do our best to predict the worst case scenario of what if something does not go to plan. So I have many times if for myself and clients come to me, they might say, look, I have about $150,000 in savings or $150,000 in equity. Um, I mean, this is general advice, but here's a example. I might, in that opinion, might just say, Okay, well, if you have 150, we should probably keep $75,000 of that separate in a safety net bank account and then only invest the 75, the remaining $75,000 in the actual property investing part of life. The reason the reason I make that approach is because you can't really predict what's going to happen tomorrow. And so we want to be safe. And this is where the people make the biggest mistakes and lose out in investing is that they're not prepared for the worst case. And then they end up selling, whether it be property or shares or business, because they're not uh, able to sustain themselves financially anymore because their circumstances change. So some of the examples that might be experienced uh, in terms of property investing might be that uh, a good tenant loses their job and needs to move out to a cheaper place. That's unfortunate for the tenant, but it's also unfortunate for the person who owns the property because... Uh, the the tenant uh, is not paying the rent anymore. Now, what I mean by calculated risk is that, for example, we advise our, the clients to take out landlord insurance, which means insurance kicks in uh, when the tenant is unable to pay the rent or moves out of the premises. So that's a calculated risk, in my opinion, because now you're covered in that part. But at the same time, this is what the safety net bank account of the $75,000 is also for, is to it'll take care of situations by, that you might not expect. Or say you have to change your employment and uh, you're going to move uh, employers and maybe you're not working for a month. And that $75,000 again that you had in your safety net would apply to that. So it's okay to take a risk. It's just most important is being patient during these changes and being prepared for the unexpected. And what I mean by being prepared for the unexpected is you kind of like expect it, not in the sense that it's going to happen, but let's just say hypothetically, well, what if this happens? Well, I'm taken care of. And so it's kind of like having a backup plan. So in my view, um, success, like I said, is not a straight line. Uh, however, if you want to live the life uh, that most uh, others would not leave, live, you should definitely need to be doing something different than others would normally do.
Excellent, Zaki. So what you're saying is to basically be prepared for the worst case scenario. That's spot on, Peter. Excellent, man. Okay, well, I'll see you next week. Thank you.